Hey everyone, it's Austin here. I'm back with another video. This is my new setup, so get used to seeing this around. I'm just about to start my second year of medical school, and I thought it would be a great video just to talk about general workflow in medical school and how I recommend to study in your preclinical years. I'm not saying this is like a study method that's going to work for everyone, but it's been really effective for me and a lot of my close peers and colleagues in medical school, so I thought I would share it with all of you and show you step by step how to set everything up. So I've been working a lot with my M1 Littles because in my school there are M2 Bigs and M1 Littles and I've just been helping them set up their studying routines and just sharing things that have worked for me. And of course all of you who have been following my medical journey know that I really like the space repetition program Anki and that's exactly how I study in medical school. So in this video I really want to go over how to set up Anki for medical school, importing the correct deck, how to get all the cards in the right place, and then how to study with the correct resources. So if you haven't seen my video on the medical school resources yet, I outline all the resources I'm going to go over in this video and I'd really recommend you check that out before you get to this video. And also if you haven't subscribed yet and you're interested in following my medical journey or just hearing about advice, tips, and strategies no matter where you are in your medical path, feel free to hit that subscribe button, it would really help me out. So yeah, let's get started on today's video now. Okay, so first things first, we actually need to install the Anki program. So if you haven't seen my video on Anki installation and settings, please go check that out before finishing this video because I already have Anki all installed and ready to go. And we're just going to jump right into how to install the Anking Medical School deck to get started on today's video. So again, check that out and then come back here and then we'll get started. Alright, sweet. So here we have Anki. This is everything you'll see once you install it. There's additional add-ons I have here, but don't worry about that right now because if you just installed Anki, all you should have is this default deck here, and then I'll walk you through exactly what we're going to do. So the first step in getting ready for studying in medical school is to install the correct Anki deck. There's a lot of different ones out there, but you really want to use the Anking version 7. It's the most up-to-date, and it's right now the best deck you can use for preclinical studying just because it's been updated with all the correct tags for all the resources that we're going to be talking about in this video. So I'll put the link in the description for the Reddit page to download the Anki version 7 on King Deck, and I'm going to take you there right now. Okay, so here's the Anki Step 1 version 6, Step 2, V2 release. Okay, he made a mistake. Alright, so this is the version 7 update, so this is how you know you're in the right place. But anyways, if you scroll down here, you're going to see exactly where to find the deck with all the media files. It's super important that you download the one that's in the comments that has all the media files because the original deck does not have the images just for copyright information. So if you see the tagged post here by Blue Skies, you can get the Anking Step 1 V7 combined deck with media. Just get everything now because it's just better to have all the cards in one place even though we're just going to be focusing on Step 1 for the pre-clinical years. Alright, so it'll take you to this mega share type of file and then once you click download it will just install and then you'll have it all in one file once that's completed we're gonna go over to Anki and import this deck and I'll show you how to do that okay so once you download the deck and get everything set up we're gonna go to file and import okay so once you find your Anki step 1 version 7 with media you can go ahead and open that and it might take a little while just because a 3 gigabyte file is pretty big and there's over 30,000 flashcards but just Hang on tight for a bit and once that's installed we'll get going on the video. It really is just taking forever and I already have this installed but I'm doing it again just for all of you so don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe on this video if it's helping you out and I appreciate that. Alright, let's uh, hope it's done now. Okay, so once the deck goes through you're going to see all this nonsense, just don't worry about it right now. Pretty much all the 30,000 plus cards are just activated so you see all these new cards. And right now, the settings for this uh, profile isn't set up yet, so that's why it only says 20 new. Normally, you want to do as many new cards as possible. And if you don't understand what I'm saying, please check out that video on the Anki installation and settings. You're going to be all caught up. So basically, what we're going to do here is browse setting. So first thing I want to do is, just for later, uh, I talk about this in my add-ons video as well, so you can check that out. But we're just going to go ahead and right-click this and add a create it as well, just so we get an additional tab over here and it'll come up here and we're gonna use that a little bit later but I just wanted to go over that now really quick 
and they're going to go up to whole collection. So these are all the cards. You can tell they're not yellow, which just means that all 31,808 cards are active right now. And there's no sane person that would do all these in one day, and you don't even know the material that it's covering right now. So what we're going to do is highlight all these cards and suspend them. So that's what you want to do is the first step when you're installing this deck. So I'm just going to shift click everything. It's going to take a little while. And then I'm going to suspend it. So for Windows, to suspend hotkey is Control J. Alternatively, you can also go on Cards and click Toggle Suspend. So it will turn all yellow in a quick second. Again, a lot of cards, so it might take a little bit. All right, sweet. So now everything is suspended. It's exactly what we want to do, and that's what you should do when you install your on king deck for the first time because basically as you go through and you learn in your preclinical years of medical school you're going to unlock the cards that correspond to what you're learning in the week during the day during the unit and eventually the goal is to have the whole deck unsuspended and matured and learned before your step one exam so we'll talk about that a little bit more later but now we're pretty much done with Anki I'm gonna jump into talking about the next thing okay so now that you have Anki set up the entire workflow of medical school is going to look like this. So pretty much when you start your day, I would recommend going through your Anki reviews. So as you go through these flashcards, it's a space repetition program. You're going to have reviews that are due each day. So just start by doing the reviews in the morning or whenever you can. Just get them done every day and make sure you keep up with your reviews daily if you can. So it might seem like, oh, you're doing all these additional reviews or flashcards and it might seem like it's costing you a lot of time right now, but I promise you it's going to be so worth it in the long run because Anki is designed for long-term memory retention and basically all the preclinical years is studying for step one anyways and that'll help you become a good doctor and retain all the information that you're going to need. So overall, in the first block of medical school, it's going to be just studying for that first block, but when you get to your second, third, and fourth block, it might seem a little bit counterintuitive to be doing all this stuff from block one when you get these old reveal flashcards coming in, but again, remember, you're studying longitudinally and that's just how this program works so when you finish your Anki reviews then you're gonna go ahead and start learning the new material for the day or for the week so what I would recommend is you look at your daily um, planner and look at the lectures that you have assigned and try to figure out what videos am I gonna watch that correspond to the lecture videos because I think like I talk about in my video that discusses medical school resources it's really helpful to just use outside resources that are catered directly to step one so that you can use Anki efficiently and just pretty much study completely on this Anki program which will prepare you for your school exams as well as your board exams basically as you go through your week and your day you're gonna see certain lectures like for example our first year medical students at UIC are going through biochemistry and I saw that on their first day they had glycolysis and gluconeogenesis and things like that so so pretty much what you're going to want to do is just go through Boards and Beyond, which is a resource I talked about before, and watch the videos on glycolysis and gluconeogenesis and whatever is going to cover your material for that day and the week. And once you do that, you're going to unlock the flashcards in Anki, which I'll show you how to do that now, and then you're going to learn those flashcards through the video from Boards and Beyond. This is also not just with Boards and Beyond. It's depending on what you're learning for that day and that week. So some days you might be learning pathology and you'll watch a pathoma video, and you're going to do the exact same thing as I'm going to show you as you go into Anki unlock those cards. There are going to be days you're doing pharmacology or microbiology and you're watching sketchy videos. And so you're going to watch a sketchy video and then unlock the corresponding cards and then do the flashcards. Pretty much every single day is really simple. You do your Anki reviews, you watch the videos you need to watch for that day or for the week, and then you do the flashcards afterward. The next day, you just do the reviews again, watch new video, add new flashcards. Honestly, if you just keep that up, you're going to be studying focused and very efficient for like four to five hours a day and then you have the rest of the time to work on research just have a personal life go to the gym and do whatever you want so I think that's a great way to study in medical school even though you're not covering all the direct material that's assigned in class you are covering all the high yield concepts so I want to add really quickly now towards the end of your study day even though this won't cover everything in your school curriculum I believe that it covers 80 to 85 percent and if you're on a true pass fail curriculum that's all you need to pass your school exams and if you're in an honoring system curriculum for medical school then you can also add additional work to the end of your day to make sure you cover all of your bases 
So what I mean by this is that you can still go through your school's lectures and PowerPoints and scroll through them just to see if there are any holes in the high yield material because a lot of times your school curriculum might have a little bit more specific details they want you to know for your in-house exams. So that would just be another way you can go ahead and make an additional flashcard and add it to Anki. This keeps all of your studying in one program which is Anki. All of it will be done on space repetition and then you can just go ahead and suspend the cards that you created at the end of the block because you won't need those cards for step one. So I'll go ahead and show you exactly what I mean by unlocking these cards now and I'll also go over a little bit about what I mean at the end where you can scroll through and add additional flashcards if needed. Alright, so hypothetically you just watched your glycolysis or gluconeogenesis videos. You go on Anki now and you click browse. Scroll down here to the tags and you're going to see on King Step 1. We're studying for Step 1, so we're going to move that one down. And again, this is all because I have Hierarchical Tagging installed, so that's an add-on. So please make sure, like I said before, watch the installation and settings videos on my channel for Anki. And then watch the add-ons videos to make sure everything is set up and ready to go. Anyways, you're going to go to BNB because it was a Boards and Beyond video. It's under Biochem, and then it's under Metabolism, and then here you have Glucose. And so there's 23 cards here, and basically these flashcards are exactly what the video was discussing. And so these are what's going to be the high yield facts you need to know for step one. You'll unlock these 23 flashcards and you'll just slam through them. Same with glycolysis and gluconeogenesis. You can see the different number of flashcards here. And basically as many videos you watch, I'll just do that many flashcards in a day. Don't limit yourself. Just do as much as you need to stay on track with your curriculum and your daily workload to finish that step one Zonki deck before your exam. So if your first exam's on, like, let's say you go up here and you look at Zonki step decks. So these are all the step decks that were created, and your first exam's on biochemistry. You want to make sure you get through all these 2,342 cards before your exam. Same thing if your test is on like cardio, derm, etc. So even if you're not watching a Boards and Beyond video, like I said before, let's say it's a Pathoma video. You go down to Pathoma, you find the chapter, it's say it's on hemostasis, it's primary hemostasis, and here's 116 cards. So this is just amazing. It's going to streamline your studying so much because when I was going through my first year, not everything was tagged. And kids before me didn't even have all these great Anki tags. And that's why the On King is the best deck because they basically have a team that went through and tagged all the videos so that you can find all the cards so much more easily. So another thing I want to teach you all is that you can find cards in other ways too in case that it was mistagged because this system is not completely perfect. And this is where we're going to talk about that created tab that I talked about and helped you get installed or showed on there earlier. Created tab is great because when the people made these flashcards originally, they made like a chunk of flashcards all at the same time on the same date. So I always sort my deck based on created. So if you sort everything based on the created date, let's say you're doing a lecture and you're going to just search something up like a keyword. Um, let's just say, again, we're doing biochemistry. So we'll just look at like fructose and see if there's any like fructose disorders. And so you go down and you see, let's say, fructose one. Okay, so this is still glycolysis. Maybe this is not a great example. Oh, sweet. So her hereditary fructose intolerance. So you watch the video on that and you're trying to figure out all the necessary cards around it. So you'll just click on whole collection. And since it's sorted based on the created, you can now find other cards that are around it that's also related to fructose. And you can see all these cards here. So that's another example if you're not finding the exact cards in a certain video, you can just search it up. Another way that makes this really effective is because if you're going through a lecture or a learning objective in an assignment and you're like, okay, I don't know what video to watch that's high yield, I can't figure it out, you can search up the card in Anki and then backtrack to find the video. So let's say you're learning GI and you have a lecture that's talking about duodenal ulcers. So you'll look up the ulcers, you'll find some cards here and basically if you see duodenal ulcers and you're basically seeing it in this pathology deck you can actually go down here and look at the tags which is what I do a lot and figure out what to watch and you can see it's tagged under Pathoma 10 GI 04 stomach so what I'm gonna do now is go down and go to my Pathoma tag go to GI which is 10 and 4 stomach and now I found all these 133 cards that I'll probably want to watch the video and do just to correspond to my school's lecture assignment. Pretty much that's exactly how I recommend you study. Once you find the cards, you just highlight all the ones you want from this certain section and then just go on cards, toggle suspend, and then all those cards will show up on your deck 
and then you can do those flashcards for the day. I would also recommend using first aid and keeping it open on the right pages while you're watching the high yield pathoma, boards and beyond, or sketchy videos. Just because when you're watching these videos, you're just focusing on getting all the information in your brain, you're not really writing notes or anything down. At least that's not what I would recommend because I find myself too busy writing notes that I'm not comprehending all the material. So I just kind of try to absorb everything I'm watching like a sponge and then I keep first aid open just to review afterward because first aid will not have all the mechanisms and all the details there but it's pretty much like a high yield notes book where everything you really need to know and could be on step one is going to be in that book and I'm going to show you my first aid book really quick just so you can see and have an idea about what I mean by this so you can see my first aid book here I just open it up to the biochem section because that's what we were talking about and I just highlight key things jot some notes down if it's on the video and that's pretty much what I've done throughout my medical school education so as I go through different organ systems different chapters I just keep first aid open just so I can reference back at it I think the sooner you start using first aid just easy to reference and just flip open to look at something when you need it that's what I would recommend and, and it helps you stay focused while you're watching your videos and also it saves time because you're not taking notes you're just focusing on the notes that are gonna be actually on your step one and referencing something that's high yield and after you do all that watch the videos do the cards look over first aid if you still feel like there's certain things you want to make Make sure you don't miss out on, you go through your school lectures, you skim through the powerpoints, and you find key facts, you can go ahead and make a flashcard for it just so you keep all your studying in one place like I mentioned before. And I've done this for some of my blocks too. All you have to do is just suspend the cards after you finish that block because again, this is going to be irrelevant details you're not really going to need for step one. Everything you need for step one is going to be in those 31,000 flashcards that are in the On King deck. But again, if you go to create deck here, we'll just name it block one in case you want to add some cards to your first block. And then you'll come up right here, you click on block one, add cards, and you can just go ahead and make a quick card. So if you have any questions about making flashcards, I would recommend you watch my video on how to make the best Anki flashcards, which I've already created. This will go over all the easiest and best ways to make flashcards for whatever you might need to improve your studying. And before we wrap up, I want to leave you all with a really good planner that I use and adapted from a Reddit thread but kind of customized it for my own use throughout my first and my second years of medical school because I think it will keep all of you guys organized and help you in your medical journey. So your general daily tasks are the first to do your card reviews and then you watch your high yield videos which is your boards and beyond, pathoma or sketchy videos. Then you can go through your lecture slides or lecture powerpoints and depending on what you do, you'll unsuspend the cards that correspond and are tagged to the high yield videos and then you can make additional cards for any information you'd want from your lecture slides. Finally, you do all the cards and then you're pretty much done for the whole day. Once you start your second year of medical school, I would recommend doing some question bank problems, which just will be good to help you with step one. You can also add a Q bank during your first year and just do a few questions here and there. It'll never hurt you, but again, that's a topic for another time. So basically here I just have like your Anki and step schedule, the day and the date, some school or lecture things you might need to do just in case you have doctoring classes or like health culture systems or any mandatory courses that have assignments just keep that organized there then you can just kind of line up your boards beyond videos pathoma sketchy micro or sketchy farm the four resources i talk about in my video on medical school resources and the high yield content i recommend you use so this will just help you kind of line up what high yield videos you want to watch with what's assigned for school. On the bottom here, I have a tab for each of the high yield resources that I mentioned. So if you go to Boards and Beyond, you can see all the videos, how long they are, and you can also just put a one here for if you've seen it already, the lecture correspondence, the date completed, and any notes you might want to add. This helps me stay organized and plan out my week just to see you know, how many minutes I have to spend watching certain videos, and it also helps you find the videos you're looking for, because you can just control F this document and find whatever videos you need. And so glucose, glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, the ones we talked about today are all right here. And then throughout your week, you can kind of just figure out what you need to do each day and be like, okay, this is block one, week one material. And then, you know, maybe down here is block one, week two, and just helps you stay organized on what to do and when to do it. So again, I'll share this in the description. And it's the same thing for Pathoma, all the videos, the sections where to find it, Sketchy Micro, Sketchy Farm and then first aid with all the corresponding pages for each of the sections. I recommend just staying organized using this planner if you can and then just following the stuff that I talked about in this video. Okay everyone, so this wraps up the video on medical school workflow. Again, I just want to emphasize that I'm not saying this is the best study method for everyone, but it really worked for me and I just wanted to share it with all of you. I think it'll help you be more efficient and just focus on all the high yield material you need to know for your medical exams and your school exams. 
So just to recap, remember the daily workflow is really just doing those Anki reviews, watching the high yield videos or looking at your lecture notes and making cards if needed. Do all those flashcards, skim over the, rec the corresponding pages on first aid, and then you're all done for the day. So if this video is helpful for you, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. I appreciate all of you tuning in. I wish you all the best on your medical journey. Good luck.